and this is section 5 of Mastering Qt Programming, which covers communicating with Qt. So let's go ahead and get started with interacting with QML from C++. In this video, we're going to cover how to publish a C++ model to QML, creating a QML view for a model, before finally accessing our model data from the view. So real quick, what is QML? Well, QML is a declarative language. If JSON and CSS got together and had a baby, the result would look like QML. QML also supports imperative coding by allowing both dynamic property bindings and embedded JavaScript. So let's get started working with it. If we open up our main.cpp, what you'll see here is basically what you get whenever you create a new Qt Quick application. We're going to create a QGUI application, create a QQML application engine, and load a QML file using the load method on our QML application engine. And then we're going to check to make sure it actually loaded correctly by checking to make sure it's not empty before executing the application. So how do we expose a model from C++ into QML? Well, let's go ahead and create an instance of our model first. Note that this photo model right here is almost directly from section two on model views, specifically the video on custom models. So our QML code has an idea called a context, which allows us to bind data to arbitrary names. So let's go ahead and grab out our QML root context and use the setContextProperty method to add our photo model to the root context. Awesome. So now we can access the instance of photo model that we created right here in QML using the name that we passed in right here, which is just photo model. So let's go ahead and move on to our QML code and create a custom view for our model. We're going to use a list view type since photo model is an actual list model. The first thing that we'll do in addition to creating our list view is go ahead and pass in the model using the model property, which again, we've nicknamed that photo model. Remember that our model is just a bunch of simple pictures or colors. So we're going to create a simple delegate that will just show the picture. List view delegates provide the item view. So it's where the rubber meets the road for how each item is visually going to look. We're going to use the rectangle type as our delegate. Now our delegate comes with properties that we can use to help build the item view. And the properties that it comes baked in with include the index, which is an integer representing the item index, any properties that you've defined on the model using the Q property macro, the default Q role names, and any custom roles exposed by overriding the role names method in your base model or using the set role names method. The default Q roles are in the Q abstract item model documentation as can be seen here. It's actually in the role names method. So remember looking at our pictures is the cute decoration role. And you can see here the QML role name that comes with the decoration role is just the string name decoration. So if we go back to our code, we're going to use that to set the color property in our rectangle. Let's also keep track of the indexed and we're going to do that using a property. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and create a mouse area so that whenever our users click on our item view, we can make something happen. So whenever our users click on our item view, we want a dialog to pop open so that the users can go ahead and change its color. Now I've already created a dialog to do that here and its ID name is color dialog. And we're going to go ahead and call the open method on it. And the color dialog needs a couple of bits of information in order to be successful. And the first is the index, which we'll pass in using the index property. And the second is the color, which we're actually going to pass in using the set color function. So we're going to go ahead and set those two variables on it and then call the open method. Awesome. So now whenever our users click on our item view, we're going to set the index or change the index in our color dialog and then change the color to be the item view color before actually displaying the dialog by using the open method. Now, since we're tracking this index in our actual dialog, we're going to actually delete it in the rectangle because we won't be using it from here. It's important to understand that for our delegates, 
our properties that we've previously discussed come into scope in the delegate binding. So we have access to the index up here. We're just not using it up here, which is why I actually displayed it. Let's go ahead and delete that. Now we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a bunch of code here that implements our color dialog picker, including a custom image that we can drag around, an image showing all of our choices, and a button to select OK. And it's not that this code isn't important, it's just that we want to focus on our interactions with C++ right now, and all this code is purely QML. So when we get to the bottom, we've got our button. And you can see here, I've noted it's our OK button. So whenever this button is clicked, we know two things, both of which are stored in the color dialog. We know the index that we want to change, and we also know the color that we want it to change to. So as we can see in the note here, in order to change the data in our C++ model, we need to call the set data method on our model. So in this model, we've already got the index in the color dialog. The value is actually going to be the color that we're gonna pass in, and the role is gonna be the decoration role. So let's go ahead and call that method. Now, there is one goofy thing about QML to C++, and that is this set data method, this index right here, what the C++ actually wants is the actual Q model index that represents that. And what we're passing in right here is just an index is an integer representation that QML keeps track of. So what we need to do before we actually call this is translate from this QML integer index into the actual Q model index that this set data method is expecting. And the way that we're gonna do that is go ahead and use the index method on our actual photo model. The index method takes in a row number, which is just this index, and a column number. Now, since our model is just a list, the column number will always be zero. And once we've got that actual QModel index, we'll pass that in instead of this color dialog index. Awesome, so let's go ahead and run this code. So now if we double click or click on any of these, you can see this dialog popped open. We can click and drag this arrow around and if we hit OK, you can see that the item view actually changes in response to whatever we set that color to be. So we're actually changing the C++ model from our QML code. And with that, we've successfully interacted with our C++ code from QML by creating a view with the QML code, publishing a model into the QML world, and getting and setting our color values using our decoration role.